Now, if you follow my channel, you know I've reviewed my share of the Ryzen laptops, whether it be the HP NVX 360, whether it be the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5, which I absolutely love, as you know, or whether it be more recently the Acer Swift 3 running that Ryzen 7. They're all really good in their own way, but the biggest complaint I've noticed about these laptops is the fact that they're not in the more premium flagship lines of these brands, and that's a very fair question. That all ends today because I have what here might be the best Ryzen laptop I've reviewed in a very long time, not only because it is running that Ryzen 7 Pro 4750U that really did well in the testing, and I'll show you all the numbers, but it also also has a premium design. Now, I reviewed the HP EliteBook 840 uh, a couple of months ago, and it was running the Intel variant, and I gotta say, I love the all-metal premium design that the EliteBooks offer. Now, it pretty much has the same chassis as the 840, but this has the better processor, in my opinion. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP EliteBook 845G7. Coming up. Now, kudos to HP for the packaging. They are now moving to a more eco-friendly packaging. And as you can see here, less plastics, more biodegradable materials. That's really good. Now, this weighs 2.93 pounds, which is pretty good in terms of portability. If you're a business user and you do some traveling, I know we're not doing a lot of traveling right now during this pandemic, but once the pandemic is over, hopefully sooner rather than later, you'll be able to take this with you on the go, very portable in that nature. It's also a pretty thin and pretty uh, svelte design. Now, the Elite Books have really good build quality. The all metal design here uh, really is durable and it looks nice. I I love that silver look on this, very sleek looking and very premium. HP makes it pretty easy to get inside this laptop. Just remove the screws, pop off the bottom plate and you're in. Now underneath this plate, you'll have two sodium slots that houses the RAM sticks. Uh, there are two slots again for you to upgrade. So that's a really good thing. I really like that. The SSD slot is also user upgradable as is the Wi-Fi card. Now there's Wi-Fi 6 on this, which is great. That makes it pretty much future proof for the foreseeable future. It's also got Bluetooth 5.0. So as far as user upgradability is concerned, that's good news. Now, as you can see, you can open the lid with one finger. That's pretty good. On top of the lid, of course, there is a shutter switch that gives you more security and privacy. That turns off the webcam. I like that. There's a fingerprint scanner located on the keyboard deck, as you see here. Uh, really nice keyboard deck here. Two speaker grills. We'll talk about sound in a moment. It's actually pretty good on this. Now, one of the things I really like about this laptop is its keyboard. It's got really good key travel, good tactile feedback, and it also has a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And I like the fact that the F11 key allows you to program that key to whatever you like, whether to launch an application, a website, a file or a folder, it's highly programmable and highly customizable, which you know I absolutely love. Now, as far as the touchpad is concerned, I really like it. It's a precision touchpad, a glass touchpad that's really responsive. Two finger scrolling is buttery smooth, all the gestures work as advertised. They did a great job when it comes to the touchpad. And it also has the track point, which is very responsive, great for scrolling through the OS. Now, one of the best parts of this laptop is its display. What we're looking at here is a 14 inch display, 1920 by 1080. That is a full HD resolution. That's also a 16 to nine aspect ratio. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of a 16 to nine aspect ratio, as you might know. I prefer the 16 to 10, but this is great for consuming media, watching things such as Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, all work well. You won't get any black bars on the top and the bottom as you would with say a 16 to 10 or a three to two aspect ratio. Now, the display is a very crisp display. It's also a very bright display. Now, this is the 400 nit low watt, low powered rather, I should say, uh, display that can get up to 400 nits in terms of brightness. I measured 377, which is a very bright display, which especially with the fact that it has a matte display where you don't get the glare or the reflections and the fact that it is that bright makes it all that much better. Now, it does cover the color gamut really well, as you can see from the numbers on the screen. You can see that this is a good choice if you are a content creator and you want to do things such as Lightroom, Photoshop, and video editing. This definitely will get the 
the job done with this display. So this is the front facing camera on the HP EliteBook 845 running that AMD Ryzen 7 Pro processor. It's the 4750 and very impressive so far. 720p, 30 frames per second webcam, uh, not the best I've ever seen, certainly not the worst. Uh, there is a shutter switch, so for those that want more privacy or security, this definitely offers that to you. Uh, I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, when it comes to the ports on this laptop, as you can see, there's a Kensington lock port, two USB-A ports. You also get your 3.5 millimeter audio jack and you get a smart card reader. And moving over to the right side, you get your nano SIM card slot. That's where you put your LTE SIM if you do get the optional LTE. Two full service USB-C ports, data charge, display out, that's always good. You also get an HDMI port for display out. And finally, your power port. Now they do supply you with a 65 watt power adapter in the box that has a barrel pin connector. But as I mentioned, those two USB-C ports do support charging. So that's been pretty good so far. Now, when it comes to the sound, you'll notice that there are two speaker grills. They're top firing speakers, which I really like. I like that much better as far as sound is concerned, rather than the more traditional bottom facing speakers we've been normally seeing in laptops uh, for the most part. But top firing speakers to me are much better. They fire towards you. The sound is better. The volume is pretty decent on this, filling up a, a nice size room pretty nicely. And it also has a hint of bass as well as the mid sounding pretty good. I would say these Bang & Olufsen speakers are actually pretty good. Now the good news when it comes to battery life is that this did really well. It did 12 hours and 15 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. That translates into all day battery life and that's thanks to the 53 watt hour battery that this has in it. It's also due to the efficiency of that AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 4750U. It's a pretty efficient processor and I got to say the uh, also the low power display also helped out in terms of the battery life all coming together, giving you really good battery life. All day battery life is something we definitely look forward to on a laptop. This doesn't disappoint. Now, performance has been very good on this laptop, and that's not a surprise. We saw the Ryzen 7 and plenty of other laptops that I reviewed on this channel, and all did very well when it comes to productivity tasks, such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked well. Now, of course, you could also game on this, a very capable gaming machine, even though it's not a dedicated, specific gaming machine, of course, this is a business focused laptop, but for those that want a game on their off time, this is definitely capable, giving you playable frame rates, as you can see from the numbers on the more popular titles. Now, when it comes to the cooling and the temperatures on this, I was very impressed. Now, other laptops in this type of thin and light design, normally thermal throttle pretty quickly after maybe a couple of minutes or so, it'll start to throttle down in order to not overheat and so forth. But this laptop maintained pretty good clock speeds as the temperature was rising, it took a, quite a bit of time before it started to thermal throttle. So I think they did a really good job in the thermal management on this. And as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, it never got overly hot, never uncomfortable. I think they did a really nice job when it comes to the cooling. Now the fan will kick in under heavy load. It is noticeable, not overly loud, not too obnoxious. That's pretty good, but you will notice it under heavy load. Let's wrap it all up. What do I think about the HP EliteBook 840? 5G7 running that AMD Ryzen 7 Pro. I absolutely love it. You're getting good performance, good efficiency in terms of battery life out of that chip. You're also getting really good thermals. That's impressive. You can game on this on your off time. You can do productivity work with the great keyboard. Uh, really durable design. This all metal design is very premium. There's no doubt about it. I like the top facing speakers. That's a really good sound, really good volume. And I like the fact that it's B&O speakers pretty good. I like that. And as far as the display is concerned, this 14 inch display, it's a matte display, it's really good. It's a low powered 400 nit display. I actually measured 377, which makes it good for both indoor and outdoor use. It did very well. Great deep blacks, really good contrast, and it does cover the color gamut really well. So if you're a content creator, this is an option that you might want to look at as far as this display is concerned. So 
this is a really good deal at about $1,600. Of course, it's not cheap, but then again, this is an elite book. This is a very premium high-end device for geared towards businesses. And I'm glad to see AMD now in some of these premium devices coming from the brands. I expect this trend to continue into 2021, especially if AMD makes great processors like they did on that 4000 series. I can't wait to see what the 5000 series has to offer when it comes to mobile processors.